promised by my last video, today I will be sharing exactly how much I spend on my 28 day tour backpacking throughout Africa with G Adventures. I'm not going to keep the suspense for much longer because I hate those videos where people are talking for like 10 minutes and then you find out the total or you even have to calculate it yourself. No, the exact amount that I spend on this 28 day tour is 5,059 euros and 50 cents. Now, this might sound crazy, but let me explain. Spending this amount of money is definitely something that you wouldn't do on your typical gap year or just any summer vacation. I know that, but for me, going on this Africa trip was really a adventure of a lifetime. I've been saving up for a long time to do this and that's why I decided to do these more once in a lifetime experiences. There was no expenses spared on this trip. I kind of did everything that I wanted to do but I will be sharing some tips as well on how you can lower this amount at the end of the video. So let's dive in and share exactly how much I spend. I use the app Travel Spend which is one of my favorite apps to track any of the expenses. I did pay for the upgraded version of the app but I think that was like five euros or something. Totally worth the money. This video isn't sponsored by them, but I use this app to track every single expense that I made on my whole month and I absolutely loved it. But yeah, let's talk about more about how much I spend and what I spend my money on. Let's start out with the expense that everybody has to pay if you're going on a group tour and that is the price of the actual group tour. So I ended up spending 2,946 euros and 69 cents on my group tour and I was able to get this price because I booked this tour on a discount. If you want to know more about how I got this price and everything like that, make sure to watch my last video where I share all my details about the review of G Adventures and I also talk a little bit more about the price of the package. Now this doesn't include your flights so let's go over that one next. For my flights I was able to get quite a good deal. I ended up paying 439 euros and 20 cents which I think is quite good especially because it's multiple different airports but it was all under the same ticket. And I actually did decide to upgrade my seat on the two long haul flights that I did. So the one from Amsterdam to Cape Town, I just upgraded to an aisle seat right for 27 euros. And then on the way back, I actually upgraded to a seat that had extra leg room. So for the Johannesburg to Paris flight, I paid 72 euros for getting a upgraded seed. So in total on flights, I ended up spending 538 euros and 21 cents. Then the third thing that will rack up as quite a big expense, depending on where you're going and how long you're going for, is actually tipping your CEO and your driver if you also have a separate driver. We had our first CEO and driver for 21 days and then we switched drivers and CEOs for the last seven days of the trip. And I ended up spending 304 euros and 14 cents on my tips for my CEOs and guides. Now this is personal, I just kind of followed the guidelines that were given by G Adventures. I definitely gave some extras throughout the weeks as well by paying for some of their drinks or something like that, but for majority the people just followed the guidelines that were given by G Adventures. And then I ended up spending 30 euros and 4 cents on other tips. Now this was sometimes like polars that came in, there were some dance performances that people came and did, so I gave some tips for those things as well and that ended up being just over 30 euros. So these are some of the expenses that you kind of can get out of. Now obviously you can find a cheaper flight ticket or you can skip on some of the extra upgrades that I did or tip a little bit less. But in general I would say these are expenses that can be expected on a trip like this. And that totaled up to a total of 3,819 euros and 8 cents. So this is already the largest chunk of your budget. These are things that you can budget for in advance. You'll know how much your flight will be or your tour before booking them. Uh, or you can at least ballpark them quite well and then just look at the website of G Adventures for the tipping guide and then you can budget this amount. But yeah, I would say these costs are already kind of the minimum that you would be spending on a trip like this, which left me with roughly 1,200 euros of spending money that I spent throughout the trip that I did. So let's dive a little bit deeper into what exactly I spent it on, starting with accommodation. Well, my flight ended up only arriving at 9 p.m. and since the start of the meeting was already at 6 p.m., 
I decided to just book the flight that was arriving one day early and got an extra night of accommodation. I ended up spending 80 euros and 55 cents for a private room in the same hostel that we were staying at. And then I ended up upgrading two more times, which cost me 74 euros and 74 cents. Now this was for two separate upgrades. One was a bit more expensive than the other one, but they were both in the final week of the tour. I decided to upgrade to actual rooms because I was feeling a little sick and I just didn't want to deal with being sick in a tent, so I upgraded my room to private ones. This is definitely not necessary, but given the circumstances, I just felt best doing this. Then another big chunk of my budget actually went to activities. Now, like I said before, I really didn't skimp out on any of the activities. If there was something that I wanted to do, I just did them. And there are definitely some things that I could have left out looking back at the experiences. But I booked a wine tasting in South Africa and I actually got some extra wine during the dinner, which in total cost me 13 euros and 81 cents. Then I also did a canoeing trip, which ended up being 24 euros and two cents. This is one of the activities I easily could have skipped because you can do canoeing anywhere. Then we did have to pay a little fee for entering June 45 and dead flay, which ended up being 10 euros and 72 cents. So this was kind of a non-negotiable. Anybody had to pay it or you would have to stay back and it was just like a weird thing. So it was kind of a must upgrade. Then I also decided to do quad biking in the Namibian desert, which set me back 47 euros and 60 cents. And then once in Botswana, I watched a Bushman dance performance. This was six euros and uh, 36 cents. I kind of would have skipped this one too. It was just not that great of an experience for me personally. It didn't feel very authentic, so that cost me a little bit. Then one of the big expenses that I did was the Okavango Delta experience. This was a flight that we did over the Okavango Delta and that one cost 119 euros and 54 cents. So it's definitely a little bit more of a pricey expense, but you are going for like an actual flight for 45 minutes to an hour and a half. I don't really remember how long it was, but felt quite nice. You saw some wildlife. We saw some elephants, some giraffes, and I think some other animals as well. But those were the two that you saw the best from the sky. And yeah, it was worth it, but it definitely isn't necessary. Then I did the safari drive in Chobe National Park, which was 38 euros and 81 cents. I really loved this one. It was a great experience. I'll link it up here as well for you guys. And then uh, once in Victoria Falls, the expenses started racking up very fast. This was something that our guide said in advance, like really budget about 500 euros or 500 US dollars for these four days that you're spending in Vic Falls. And everybody's like, what? Why would I need this amount of money for just four days? But mm -hmm, yeah, we ended up spending that much, all of us, because that's the food wasn't included in this area, but also the activities. So we did a boost cruise, which was 37 euros and 31 cents, which was relatively cheap considering that all the alcohol was included and we definitely took advantage of that. And then I also included, this wasn't a optional activity of G Adventures, but this was the park fee for Victoria Falls. This one was 30 US dollars or 28 euros and four cents at the time that I was uh, doing this. And then one of the biggest expenses that I made on my trip itself was a 15 minute helicopter ride over Victoria Falls. I'm not gonna say like if you're doing this trip on a budget then maybe don't do this but if you have any money left over or want to spend on something big please do the helicopter ride because it was just absolutely gorgeous. I loved it. It was definitely expensive. It was 159 euros and 53 cents and I also paid 16 euros for the photos and video of the helicopter ride. Now I was able to get that price because I think it was around 50 or somewhat US dollars and we actually split it under three people so that's how we were able to get the price down a little bit more to so only like 16 euros which was quite nice. And then the final optional activity that I did and spent some money on was the safari that I did in Kruger National Park and that one cost 48 euros and 79 cents. So as you can see like the safaris themselves weren't the big expense um, activities which I personally thought definitely were going to be uh, but I was happily surprised with the prices like they were all under 50 euros there were some others that I didn't do um, that were also around the same price so definitely worth the money that you're spending on it and that added up my total of activities to 550 euros and 19 cents 
So definitely a good chunk of change that you can kind of estimate yourself if you want to spend that much or want to spend a little bit less. Now with G Adventures or at least with this tour of G Adventures, one of the things that I was happy about was that there was a lot of meals which were included in your general price. Now this is definitely the case for Africa. If you're going to other countries this might be different. Uh, but it's just easier to have your meals included because a lot of times you're either off-road, you're in remote campsites and there just isn't a lot of options to go out for dinner or anything like that. So they just include all the meals. Um, now we were on a combined tour so every welcome dinner wasn't included. There was also two days in Swakopmund where we were kind of stationary and a lot of people were doing different activities. So all the meals there weren't included. Um, there were some meals in uh, Victoria Falls that weren't included and then also on the last week there was a few meals that you had to pay for yourself but I ended up spending 262 euros and 29 cents on additional meals now this was definitely a lot of airport food but also just some optional things like we got some carrot cake here and there uh, some lunches some breakfast and some of the dinners like I was saying now a dinner would cost anywhere between 10 and 20 euros. This was definitely very affordable and it most likely also included one or two alcoholic beverages for me. So yeah, it could be a little bit less, it could be a little bit more. Sometimes I pay for some of the CEO and driver's food, but yeah, that was kind of the total amount that I spent on this trip when it comes to food and beverages. Now this total is just the food and drinks that I did at restaurants or takeaway orders but I also made a separate category for alcoholic beverages that I bought like say separate nights when we were going out or when I was going to the grocery store and buying some alcoholic beverages and that total ended up being 87 euros and 49 cents so if you don't drink alcohol or you're trying to limit your alcohol intake on this trip you could take out this amount from the budget as well but yeah that's why i kind of wanted to record it separately because i know that not everybody is drinking on this trip there was definitely some heavy drinking involved now for me personally that was just because you know you're spending all these nights at the campsites and what we would do is we just buy like a bottle of wine or a six pack of beers and you would drink it throughout the nights and when you were staying at the campsites because there's just not really that much to do now obviously you don't have to be drinking alcohol you could also be drinking other things or just enjoying your night without a beverage but for us personally that was just something that we enjoyed doing and this is definitely the thing with the 18 to 30 something tours that there's usually a lot more drinking involved but nobody was judgmental for the people that weren't drinking so it's just something that is a personal choice and then i also recorded that i spend about 51 euros and one cent in grocery stores now this most likely includes a little bit of alcohol as well because sometimes I didn't calculate it out separately but this is also like snacks that I bought so sometimes we would just go and get an ice cream when we're on the road or we would get some like chips and some other salty snacks or something for the drives that we were doing. I also recorded coffee separately because I saw Backpacking Bananas do this because she also said that not everybody drinks coffee so it could be good to record this separately. Now on this trip there was actually not that much places that sold coffee. Now obviously at the campsites you could buy them sometimes but I really didn't. This was more like whenever we were going to like a coffee shop. I only spent about 6 euros and 75 cents on coffee so not that much but thought I would record it separately for those people that don't really drink coffee. And yeah, that is definitely the total on food and beverages. I will try and calculate it out and this is the total amount on extras that were food, beverages, drinks, uh, and groceries, and coffee. So in total I spent this much extra on the trip. Then one expense that I didn't think was going to be this high, but looking back I can understand why it was, and that is actually laundry services. So I almost spent 50 euros on laundry. I exactly spent 48 euros and 28 cents on laundry. I did laundry three times. Once it was 14 euros, once it was only 7 euro, and one time it was 27 euro. Now the reason the 27 euro was so expensive was because every single item was hand washed. Would I have had to spend this much? No, but I decided to do everything and some of the things they had fixed prices for so for example I have some travel towels but there wasn't really anything that I could write down other than a towel and those were I think about 30 pula which converted isn't that much it's like two euros or something but 
some of the travel towels were like the really small ones and I just wanted them washed and yeah it ended up being a little bit more expensive than what I thought it was gonna be you can definitely do hand washing but the issue that I ran into with hand washing was we weren't usually at campsites for more than one night and because it got dark so quickly after we get to the campsites I would say it got dark around 6 or 7 p.m. you would just not have enough sunlight to have your clothes dry and so the 27 euro one was when we were going to the Okavanga Delta and you would pick your clothes up when we returned like the day after and so we were able to leave our clothes there and they would do the hand washing there and we would pick them up afterwards so it was just a little bit more convenient but there were definitely people on the trip that did hand washing yeah it's just a personal choice definitely an expense that I was not expecting to be this high that ended up being. Then one category I'm pretty proud of myself is actually the shopping department and I only bought two things on this whole trip and one was a pillow and it was only eight euros and 95 cents and then the only other thing that I bought was this t-shirt. So as you can see this t-shirt kind of has our whole trip on there. You could totally customize it and it was 30 US dollars or 28 euros and 54 cents. Then when it came to souvenirs, I saw a lot of people spend a lot of money on this, but I knew that I was traveling with my small little backpack and I did not have a lot of space left. I bought two pairs of earrings and then one necklace. And then I also bought one postcard just because a friend of mine is really into that and so I sent her a postcard. But that was everything that I bought souvenir wise. Another expense that you might not think of beforehand is the exchange fees. So what I did is before I went on this trip I checked with my bank if I could get some local currency out and I got some US dollars out because I knew in Victoria Falls they would pay with US dollars. And then I also got some South African rand out, but that was it. I wasn't able to get any Namibian dollars or any Botswana and Pula. So I had to get those currencies while I was in the country. And I also ran out of South African rand. So I also had to exchange a little bit more of that as well. And I ended up spending about 8 euros and 52 cents on exchange fees. This was one time for Zar, one time for Namibian dollars, and one time for Botswana and Pula. I was able to get enough cash out each time I was doing a transaction because our CEO told us how much money he would ballpark that you would be spending on the next couple of days. And then you could exchange that amount of money or you can get out more or less depending on how much you think you will spend but they always give you a good idea and for me I always had just enough or a little bit extra but then the extra amounts I just ended up using as the tip so I was able to get rid of all the currency except for like a few notes that I wanted to keep for memory's sake. And then I have three more categories that are kind of random. One is the general expenses which ended up being six euro and forty cents and in this is a birthday gift. There was one guy on our trip who was celebrating his birthday and so we just decided with a few of us that we wanted to get some balloons and we saw these really nice ones at a shop and so that was a hundred czar each are six euros and ten cents and then one time there was a toilet fee where you had to pay to go and use the toilet there was a cleaning lady as well um, so that was only 30 cents but yeah I recorded it as well then I also took a taxi in Victoria Falls one time I definitely didn't need the taxi but I was tired I wanted to go home quickly and the taxi was like 10 US dollars which I split with a friend and ended up being four euros and 71 cents for me. And the final thing that I spent some money on was my local SIM card and loading my SIM card in Namibia. So I was using Airlo, which is an eSIM uh, for South Africa and I had some credit left for that one so I didn't have to pay for my eSIM while I was in South Africa. But unfortunately, Namibia wasn't included in a separate package. You could only do this in the Africa bundle, but then the service is just a little bit less. So I decided to go with a local option and the SIM card itself was only 60 cents. And then loading, I think it was about three gigs of data onto it was three euros and 85 cents. So this was definitely worth it. I was able to have service throughout my time in South Africa and Namibia. For Botswana and Zimbabwe, I just relied on Wi-Fi because we were in both countries for only four or five days, of which some of them were going to be off-grid anyway, where there wasn't any service. So I didn't think it was worth 
getting a uh, SIM card for those countries and it was also a little bit more difficult to do so. So that was everything that I ended up spending money on. So yeah, in total I ended up spending the 5,059 euros and 50 cents which is 59 euros and 50 cents over my budget. But I would say in the grand scheme of things, I did a quite a good job in not spending too much on my trip in Africa compared to what I budgeted for it. But there's definitely some ways that you can cut out expenses. One of them being cutting a little bit of alcohol. I definitely drank quite a bit on this trip and I would have been able to save some money that way. Another thing that you can do is choose between doing the Okahonga Delta experience and doing the Victoria Falls flight, as well as some of the other activities that you could have skipped, and also the room upgrades and the flight upgrades or getting upgraded seats are some things that you can cut out some expenses. But like I said, I would say the minimum that you would be spending on this trip is around 4,000 to 4,500 euros. And that's just because the minimum amount that you would be spending on this trip is already around 3,800 euros. That was just for the flights, the accommodation, the first night for itself and some of the tips. So given that you're already spending close to 4,000 and I would say like 4,500 is good estimate if you want to include your meals, some of the optional activities and some drinking as well. So yeah, that is just kind of what I would say that is the minimum for this trip. It's definitely not a cheap destination and you would have to budget for this well in advance, but it was so worth it. I really loved my time getting to know everything in Africa and doing all these different experiences. It was definitely an experience that I won't easily forget and I made friends for a lifetime. If you want to see a little bit more on what my trip was like, then you can watch this playlist which has all the videos of this past month and you can also watch this video if you want to see a little bit more on my thoughts with G Adventures and just going a little bit deeper into my experience traveling with them. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was one of the last ones from the Africa series, but there's so many more videos coming to you guys that I'm really excited about. So make sure to subscribe so you can start preparing, planning, and saving for your next adventure. And I will see you in the next video.